Hi. Hi, welcome to Ghost Man Radio Station. And my guest today is Daniel Burnett. Who is Daniel Burnett? Well, he's one of the youngest cryptozoologists we probably know. John reckon, reckons, and I reckon as well, he's probably going to be a future John in his old age. You know, when he gets older, he'd it, be like, a, 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 because the subject you've chosen is not a conventional subject, is it? Mm, yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, no, it's not. What got you into it? Because it's not it's not like your average day you get into football or major other things that young lads your age get into. So what made you get into cryptozoology? So um I was sat with my granddad probably about two years ago now. Um and I was sat watching the program Expedition B- uh Bigfoot. So we were uh, sat and it was interesting and oh there's this oh there's that and um i i said to gramps is this real and he went well could be and 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 he didn't i didn't really think of anything else of it and we were really, really excited for the next episode and my cousin was with me and and i went home one day uh and researched um what bigfoot is and what bigfoot's like and it was very very interesting and the it was just an amazing um rabbit hole that i went down and from then on i've been really really interested into the bigfoot world and I decided to actually go out in the forest and to kind of gain the exper- the experience um for when I um for when we go and actually look. Um and I took my cousin and we went to look for deer and it was probably the most amazing year we had. And it we found footprints. We found a deer actually barked in front of us, and it 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 was an amazing, an amazing trip. And when that ended, um, because there's only so many times you can go out and go and look for deer, um, we we decided to kind of go right. It's time to go and look for um a big cat because it was around this area and we didn't know if Bigfoot was around around this area and it was an easier subject. And when we went out looking for this big cat, uh uh my nan, who is my partner in all in all expedition stuff, she she stood by me and looked down and went, that Daniel, what's this? And I turned round and I stood there in shock for probably two two minutes um and it was an 18 inch print in front of us um and from then it's been crazy mate honestly and it's been an amazing journey and you do know that the history of british bigfoot has had a controversial up and down Mm, yeah yeah, i'm not gonna go too much into it yeah yeah, yeah. there's the two beliefs really a it couldn't be possible in this country but obviously mm. you're disproving this because I know you produce quite a lot of evidence. Um, and you're going to, I know from through watching John's, you're trying to get a second opinion so that you've got more further evidence. Yeah. And there's the paranoid, par- par- paranormal version that it's not really real. We're just sensing it from yeah. like, like reliving a, 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 a thing from our caveman days. Mm. You know, like... And, 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 It'll be before any of this happened. I felt the same way. I didn't believe Bigfoot was here in the UK. Gramps didn't believe Bigfoot was here in the UK. Mum and Mum and Dad didn't. And it was until we found that, and I went, "Holy crap! What's in front of me?" And I go, and nothing that we have found. We didn't even go into the forest in the mind of Bigfoot. We were going into the forest with the mind of finding a where where big cats live. And it's 
from then it's just snowballed very very big and nothing and i can promise everyone this is fake it's all 100 percent le- legit in everything that we found and i, I wouldn't I... have suspected it otherwise daniel because i would have thought mm. with your condition you, you yeah know, uh, you know you're autistic is that right yeah um and not being funny most autistic people are very focused minded you don't mind me mentioning this do you no, it's fine, no, mate. Yeah, that, that, they're very focused minded because I I watch yeah. Old Man. Do you know of Tom Stol- Stolman? He's a well. He's a, he's one two world's strongest men, and he's he's autistic as well. Oh, is he? Wow. Yeah. So I know yeah. from watching his videos that you you can be very analytical minded. So you won't mm. just you won't you'll be very. This is you know I've got to find that out. And this is the way it's gonna go, yeah. And and if I want to do something, I'll do it. And it's that's kind of a good thing to have in research because a lot of people, once you kind of stop finding stuff, you kind of give up. And that's what some researchers do is because they can't find anything, they just stop. Now, I am determined to find out what made all of this um in this forest and nothing's gonna stop me no I, nothing i can't see how how it could be a fight folks because a how would nobody know that he was going to go out of the forest that exact day yeah b, b you would have heard somebody there because i don't think i presume this forest isn't well used by many people not many people no we won't mention where because we don't want any evidence. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I know John said that he's looked at your pictures, and Richard's looked at the evidence yeah. as well. And they're very, they're very convinced that you have found something. They can't say exactly what because, like you said, you've got to be find the. Yeah. The, you've got one little proof, but you've got yeah. to make sure in this world that we live in, unfortunately, mm. because everything could be fate. So mm. easily, there's like a lot of big cat reports. You mm. read them, and of course, people say, "Oh, I see the big cat outside my window." And all it is is they've seen a cat, a small cat, and it they've enlarged it and just faked mm. it. Yeah, yeah. and 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 with the DNA, you go, can that be faked? Can that be? Fake to the point where scientists have brought that up. You don't know, but it's a question that that that, that just unloads a lot more questions. That in in this job, there's no answers, which is a bit of a pain. But that's that that that's the way you you kind of got to research. Um, it's but what we found out there, I can say, is not natural. Well, that's the point, though, isn't it? If if it was a magic answer, a bit like Loch Ness. Mm. Now, we know probably that Pinosaur probably doesn't live at the bottom of Loch Ness. Probably mm. not feasible, but there's lots of theories. It could be ill, could be like a, a, um, a deformed, uh, a mutated fish of some sort. Yeah, mm. I think it's probably going to be more along that lines, like a catfish. Yeah. A lot of people say catfish can't possibly live there. But then there's people that say people you brought in catfish from Europe to be hunted, mm. you know, fished yeah. in the rivers. Um, yeah. So it, it it's a it's a very very big mystery, and it's just an amazing mystery. And one thing that kind of good goes to mind is us as humans are destroying the forest we are that that, that's what humans do which is why when it comes to actually finding Bigfoot if we do I think yes for this scientific world we want to find out but why don't we leave these creatures alone to what they're doing because so far the people, the 
the creatures that we have kind of come across, they've now become endangered. So it's kind it's kind of do we leave these creatures alone? Or now my me myself, I'm stuck between both. I I want to find this creature, but yeah, but yet again, I don't. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I do know what you mean. I I'm I I'm a great. I was talking to someone the other day, and I am a great believer that, you know, I was saying to them meant that we think about giants, and mm. people are about giants or little people. I was wondering if like back then anybody over six foot would have been considered a giant. Because the average mm. height of people far, far back is probably about five foot or just under. Because you mm. look at the main, the height of buildings. Of yeah. Buildings and that. So anybody yeah. over six foot would have been considered giant. Anyone under five might have been considered a small person. And then there could have been myths mm. built around that. I'm not saying that's true because I don't know. But I, I yeah. can see how mythology... And folkology can cross over into cryptozoology. And I think, I don't think there's any difference in them personally. I think what's happened is that I always believe that a myth or folkology, there has to be an element somewhere in there, a truth. It's just yeah. an element. Mm, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. That's very true, mate. So, what do you think? How far do you want to go with this? Would you like we'll say go as anything? far? We'll go as far as you want, mate. And I, I, I think, I think John's mentioned this as well that he thinks that you should write something like a book based on how you did this. That how you how you started your podcast up, how you got involved in the cryptozoology world. So, I, I don't know if John's told you, but. That book is coming out in February. That's that... good. I'm, I'm pleased about that because I think yeah. it's important for someone like you, who's a younger generation, mm. it's going to be more acceptable in that in the younger world. Yeah. Because, you, know, you know, when oldies like me and John talk about it, they're just going to go, oh, those old farts, what do they know about it? You know? <laughs> but they do, don't they? <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean? it's true. yeah. 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 And I'm glad that your uh, your first Bigfoot convention went quite well because I heard I did well. hear very good I did good for hear very good results. Yeah, very it it that. it was a very very good success and it's it was amazing to see so many people there um, that here in the UK that they cared about what. Bigfoot is and they wanted to come and find out what it was all about and it's like there was a uh, a gentleman and a uh, young lady who were there from probably uh, 5 to 10 and which is and the event started at 10 and they left at 2 o'clock when the event finished wow. so that so they were there for the whole event so that and, and i didn't know who they were so it was a pretty good event to see that 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 really impacted and i can say our our plans for next year are getting bigger by the minute well yeah but that's how you progress you've mm. got to see how well the first one goes then you can yeah. see the te- you can see the teething problems you can say Oh, should mm. we try this next time? Perhaps we should try an ice cream. You know, like mm. a, you know, even if it's like only get, you don't get to see it like a delay, you know, like they're mm. doing the events on YouTube, you know, mm. like you you watch a lecture, but that was only on that time, you know, you won't see all the rest of it. Perhaps you just mm. want to watch the lecture sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, say so, say so we did do a live stream for uh the talks that we had, um, and we did have some um some people watch that, which was amazing. Um, so yeah, it all together, it was a very very good success. I'll say that. That's good. I'm glad about that. And I talked to uh, a couple of people that you uh, went to, uh, Vera. Vera, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, obviously, I sent you the podcast interview I uh, did with her. And she came across oh, a very, yes. she, she was a very, very interesting person. Yeah, she is, and she, yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was really, it was really, really nice to see that they, that they were all there. Um, and in fact, I'm all, I'm, I'm actually meeting up with them all on Sunday. So, yeah. So it's a, it, it's a really, really nice. Um, it was a nice time to see all of them there. Um, very, very stressful and busy. <laughs> I'll say that, but um, yeah. Yeah, it was a very, very great event, mate. Well, you had a good person there because John used to run his own weird weekends. Yeah. In Wolves and places like that. So he had yeah. experience of how it runs and what so went John, to stop. John did really, really well. Um, he sold all his books um, and so did Richard. Um, they, uh, everyone liked their, their talks. Um, yeah, but they did amazingly well. But well, they're very good at it. They've they've done it for so long. They know how mm. to engage audiences. And, yeah, yeah. And Richard, Richard with these expeditions. I mean, I I wouldn't have the guts to do what half the things he does. But... <laughs> Is it something you would do if someone said to you, Daniel? Someone rang up from America. Would you like to go on a Bigfoot expedition in the well... where they're, they're over there? To say that I'm friends with most of the Bigfoot community over there, I would say yes. Um, where uh, we we might go to a conference uh, in June, um, and we may go in the forest then. Um, but on a big expedition, it would take some thought because I don't really fancy being eaten by a bear. Um, now that now that's one of the concerns, Mark, that I don't have to worry about here. Um, no, I don't. But think so. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But um, my answer to that was I don't know. Um. Now, not in the dark. Anyways, I'm not a big fan of the dark. I, yeah, I, unfortunately, I... most of them come out at night because it's yeah say say it's 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 the it's the actually being in the forest and in the dark where here in the uk yeah yeah yeah, here in the uk you do have those odd few people that will be there in, in in the dark and 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 kind of do but in america in in the middle of there, you could just get lost in there, couldn't you? It, it, it's it, it's a maze, but it's it's an amazing place. Um, say I go to Florida, Orlando every year, and even that's amazing when you fly in on the plane. You can see it, the amount of forest the that is um and a creature could live there. Oh yeah, it's it, about, yeah. We, we don't even know half the planet yet. And those yeah. people say oh, we've been everywhere. We haven't been. I mean, it's still finding yeah. tribes in the middle of the Amazon. I know, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> what would you do you think there is a connection? I felt I find that when I look up for Bigfoot. I normally find not so much in this country, but perhaps it's this country. The connection between Bigfoot, paranormal, and UFO reports in that one area. Um. Oh yeah, very very good. Good kind of. Now I've been asked that a few times. Now I don't know that much about UFOs. Um, I haven't studied them enough. I would say there is some link somewhere. How? It, it remains a mystery. Um, because you tend to have weird encounters with lights. Um, now, I don't know. Now, I know that is definitely in America. But what I try and do with my research is I try and take everything 
from here in the UK. So reports from here in the UK, I take as because every country, in my opinion, has their own similarities and differences with Bigfoot. So it's like you have different color hairs, you have different color uh, like eyes and tree structures. You have different kind of it's like in Alaska, you have upside down trees. And um, now I just think here in the UK, we haven't there's not been enough people out in the UK researching Bigfoot. So we don't have that much. So the more people we can get out, the more evidence we're going to be able to get. So, which is why it's like I've started a uh, UK Bigfoot research team. There's some brand new stuff coming in um, in January. So, so some really, really big stuff, which should be amazing. Um, so the more people that we can get involved, the more we know about Bigfoot, which means the more we're gonna see. Which means are you gonna do it like uh, they use it like the Welsh do when they do the big cat sightings? They normally put a uh, found in Cumbria, uh, big cat. A map. Spot. Yeah, like a map and like a de- if possible, if the witnesses don't want to mention names, anything you could say, Mister Smith saw such and such or heard such and such. Mm. In- this well, you don't have to give the reference, but you can give away the area. I mean, the area is mm-hmm. vast, so it doesn't matter. Where you say mm, so, so we 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 as a team have start have started to kind of put put together a map. Um, it's not going to be published yet because we're still using it for private investigations. Yeah, yeah that's right. But um, but it it should be published probably summer next year. Yeah, wait till you've done all the investigations you don't yeah. want to know about. And then mm-hmm. once you've done that, it doesn't matter so much because you're not going to give away exactly where it is. Yeah. Because even if they do know where the forest was, I mean, you're not going to... The forest, even the size of a small forest, you're not going to find an exact location unless you've got one for days. Yeah, kind of and, and, and the location of the forest where prime where the primate dna will never come out of my mouth no um, no don't don't, don't, it, don't don't give it to anyone. it will never um no. and because it it's very very important that we keep a very very close eye on that area because you don't find primate dna there every day and it needs to be a place where we keep under kind of um surveillance i'll say that um because yeah if we find a creature there then we're um we're gonna completely ask the council to go can we cordon this off please (laughs) i know you said Um, you found some bones now i did say i did say to john it could possibly be i'm not saying it is it could have been a poacher's sort of hideaway, you know, where he kept all the ones he didn't want nobody to know about. I'm not saying it is, but yeah. you've got to look at, as you know, you have to look at all these possibilities. But like mm-hmm. you say, you never found a head, which is pretty unusual. Mm. And it's pretty unusual not to find at least a rib bone or something that says mm. the feature was there. So I'm not too sure. I'm not an expert enough to know these things. There's so I I know a decent amount uh, about these bones that we found. We found forty to fifty bones in one in one pit. Now you go <laughs> forty to fifty bones. We should be calling the police, but um, you go. <sighs> We we confirmed it's there, so we know it's there. Um, but how did that get killed? Now there's been another. Um, there was another carcass found, an actual carcass. We've said it's there, but very recently we got some hair that was about 
uh, four feet off the ground in a, in a tree. And it it looked like sheep wool. You, it's probably about a metre from all the fields because you got like a bush and then it opens up into the fields and there's gaps. But there is no way the farmers are going to let their sheep in the forest. No, no, no way. No. So, and that kind of went to me like we've assumed it's deer but we don't know it's deer and it's a whole carcass you had the whole rib cage and it was still it was still perfect uh you had the back and the legs were torn off which would say an an animal would have done it rather than a human I don't know I can I can't answer that yet um, yeah, because yeah, it's hard to tell because, you know, because it is possible to tear. Mm. But, yeah, you yeah get and, the, and, the... and <sighs> sheep are easy prey, easy yeah, for yeah. big cats, yeah. Bigfoot, stuff like that. Dogs, yeah, anything. Yeah. Mm. Now, something that I've been meaning to do for a while is see if I can locate the farmer who who would actually put these sheep in, in, in his fields. Because if you find the farmer, now quite often farmers will have some odd sightings. In my opinion, there is more Bigfoot sightings here in the UK than we than we know about, there are people out there that have seen Bigfoot ju- that just has haven't come up. I spoke to a witness on 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 my podcast. And he said I didn't share my story for thirty five years. I went, why? He went, I was t- I was too scared. I went, right. So people were too scared to come forward. Now that's where it goes into the community that you need to build where you go you, when you bring up the word bigfoot people chat to you about it don't laugh don't laugh at you laugh at you and just walk away because that is the community here in here in the UK that we know about isn't it it's so that's what i'm trying to kind of get away from is where you can go out and say that word bigfoot and people know um and if that farmer has a sighting of Bigfoot, that will put more on the investigation, which means it would increase the chances of a Bigfoot drawing that sheep into the forest. Now, it could have been a cat, it could have been a dog, it could have been a deer just dying. But it still remains the weird fact of finding a lot of sheep wool. It is a bit weird. Yes, it's not not the sort of thing. I heard, I did interview one person years ago, who lived in who uh, worked up Scotland way. He reckoned, and they, I don't know much. Uh, he was quite convinced he saw werewolves. Now, whether it was a werewolf or whether um, it was a bigfoot, looking more, you know, he may stoke the face in the darkness, for like more of a. Uh, Dog face rather than the ape face. I don't know. Uh, he didn't go into much detail. So, whether it's, mm. I mean, he he was thoroughly convinced, and he had army training, so he would wow. know bits of it. I can't. I have to try and find that somewhere. But I, I've got so many, I can't remember which ones it was. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And I think it's always a fascinating subject, cryptozoology, because people obviously think it's all about the monsters and all that. Mm. But it's not. It's about finding things in the, finding things that should shouldn't even exist. Because like in the dinosaur world, they're always finding something. Yeah. Recently there was a not dinosaur, it was a blind shrew they found somewhere. 
that was shouldn't what? be even shouldn't even be exist apparently. Wow. Yeah, I put it on uh, John's uh, center of uh, CSF uh, Facebook page. Mm, wow. Because John used to do a lot of the new species, but it doesn't do it so much. Now. Mm, yeah. People have some interest in it, really. Mm-hmm. They, they prefer like this talks about different subjects. Yeah, wow. And how do you fit all this in with school? So I am, as you mentioned, uh, I'm I'm autistic, so I I really struggle with school, and I'm year ten now, so coming up to GCSEs, but it's to the point where I can't even walk in the gate. So mm. at the moment, I'm doing home learning, um, which means it puts me on a better position to do all this work now to to arrange the event was absolutely hectic it took up all my time i was up to about midnight preparing stuff up at seven doing and it i make time i make time yeah, if i, I want to do it I'm i make time about that. I, I i just thought i mentioned about the autistic bit because i don't think you highlight it enough because I think it's important that people know just because you've got a problem doesn't mean you can't do something. It doesn't really matter to me, mate. I I I I will roll on with what I with what I do, and it doesn't really, apart from the anxiety side side of things, I just get on with stuff. Um, and it's not really a problem, really. It's just. It's just kind of just living with it, and 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 just kind of it does come with an amazing memory, though. I have an an amazing memory. <laughs> yeah, it's got the, it's good it's good it's got bad points, but I think yeah. it's, it's like me. I got uh, I got various problems, really old problems and memory problems. But like I keep saying, people, it shouldn't be defining you. It should be the fact that as long as you're trying to do something about yourself, even mm. if you, it's like if I post one video. And only one person watches it. I think, oh, at least one person might have their way to watch it. Yeah, you know, mm. because you can't worry about numbers all the time. Yeah, yeah. I imagine yeah. when you do your podcast, you, you, I've seen the way you set it up, and it's quite clever. I like the way you mm-hmm. do discussions and interact and laugh about joke. And all that. I think it's mm-hmm. important that you have the comedy side of it, and that you don't take it mm. completely too seriously. Mm. Because I think it, it, the world's serious enough as it is. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and say I will. De- I will definitely say I did my interview with John yesterday, and that will be out uh, February, I think. And I gotta say, we did more laughing than talking. Yeah, John's a good character. He's a good player. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he is. He, he, he's very good at the getting the information. Because he's more knowledgeable than I ever would be. He's probably mm-hmm. one of the top cryptozoologists in Britain, in my opinion. Mm. And it's like you've got you've got some really, really good people here in the UK and no one is kind of recognising um these guys for it. And it's like now I've been put on the paper as now the UK's biggest um bit Bigfoot researcher now um or quickly um and it's just amazing it's just it's it's the fact of trying to get these people together and the more John's name goes out the more my name goes out the more my team's name go out the bigger we're gonna get which means more people will know about us and that's what i want i don't want it famous don't want it for money i want it so then people will know people know we're here so then if anything comes up if anyone spots anything we're here and because when you sight when you sight one of these creatures where do you go what do you do and the answer soon, I hope, will be come to us and come to come and 
and even John's in my team now. So, so it means that that John will get the info. I'll get the info. And loads of other researchers will get the info. Are you going to have uh, Richard Freeman on your podcast? He's very interesting, very entertaining. I, I am arranging an interview with him currently now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You'll find him very, very, very fascinating. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. led a very, very career, and I, I, as I say, I, I couldn't have the guts to do what he does. Yeah. He, no, neither. He, yeah. I mean, he's travelled. I would have thought halfway around the world and back by now, just doing expeditions. Hmm. Now, have you got a next project or are you just going to keep to this project for the moment? Well, there's loads of new projects coming inside this project. Yeah, we got loads. Uh, yeah. um, and I'm not going to release them until uh, New Year's Day. That's good. And please mention where people can find your podcast because that's important. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll say that now. Yeah, so we got it's now on Amazon and Audible. I didn't even know that. And it was on there. People were sharing it more than ever now. Uh, we've got, um, we're on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, and and every other podcast uh, app you, you can think of in the world. We we are then on YouTube with um with like video as well. So you so you now, so you can now actually watch us on YouTube as well as listen to the audio podcast um, on both. So we're now on, we're reaching twice the twice the viewers. And I can say in a couple of days, I'm going to be reaching um, 1K plays, which is amazing. Uh, play counts as five minutes of watching, which is amazing. Good. Thank you, Daniel, for that. 